So Aleph is also the first letter of the Hebrew word ameth, so truth. We need the truth to be revealed. Okay, yod he -we, the seal of yod he -we is truth. Aleph also begins the three words that make up God's mystical name in Exodus. I am who I am in Hebrew. Ayer, asher, ayer. Ayer, asher, ayer. There we go. Aleph, Aleph, Aleph. Aleph induced mysticism represents the oneness of God. The letter can be seen as being composed of an upper yod. So this is the letter yod. And a lower yod, an upside down yod. So upper wisdom, lower wisdom. Okay, the three parts of the serpent, the head, the body and the tail, or the three parts of Mashiach, the right wing, the body, the left wing, okay, whichever way you look at it, we, we, what, 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 whether this is a, a two-way mirror, you're looking at yourself and seeing a serpent, or you're looking through it and through Mashiach and seeing your te wow here, okay. The upper yod represents the hidden and ineffable aspects of God, while the lower yod represents God's revelation and presence in the world. The vav is the hook that connects the two realms together. So this is the this is the connection between the hidden and the revealed as well. And what you might call in science the it would be the hook between um, you know like quantum physics and classical physics. <laughs> You know, this super hidden world and then the classical revealed world. Okay, so the letter Vav is the hook between the body of the bird or the body of the serpent, which which is represented by Yeshua. Um, the body of the bird is, is represented by Moshiach, but, uh, sorry, Moshe, but it's all different things. We're looking at three aspects, just as there's three aspects to that letter Yod. Uh, sorry, the letter Aleph, the upper wisdom, the lower wisdom, the Vav in between, and all that that means. And as we've connected that back to that whole concept of contradiction and all that number 747. So three testimonies, three books, three main aspects to Mashiach, Tifereth, Yesod and Malkuth. So these are the three, as, three parts of what's called the Tree of Life. Okay. We've got the Ark of the Covenant, and in the Ark of the Covenant, there's three testimonies, three books. We've got the stone tablets, we've got the jar of manna, and we've got the rod of Aaron. The jar of manna, by the way, is never placed within the Ark of the Covenant. It's placed outside the Ark of the Covenant. There's the, just the Lukoth, and there's a very significant reason why, because the manna, it represents the bread, the bread of life, represents Yeshua, the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef, we know was placed outside the camp. So there's all kinds of references there. Okay, so we've got the three books, three testimonies, three main aspects to Mashiach. So we've got, let's go and have a look at this concept again of the three books, bearing in mind it's some relationship to that letter Aleph. As we can see, and some relationship to the serpent that's split into three parts, some relationship to the Mashiach, which is split into three parts. So this is taken from the book um, Sefi Yetzira, one of the oldest Kabbalistic books um, known. Three books, the Sefiroth, are the way that God communicates to us. So these are the ten Sefiroth on the tree of life, from Keta to Malkuth, from the crown to the kingdom. Okay. Um, and these three books are basically one is they're called Sefer. You're really analysing the word Sephiroth here, the ten Sephiroth on the tree of life. So in the book Sefer Yetzira, they're analysing the source of the name Sephira, the so source of the word Sephiroth, because the no Sephiroth is the way that God communicates to us. Okay, so what exactly, in what ways is he communicating to us? So there's three ways of interpreting this word, Sephiroth, and they are likened to three different books. So I hope you can see how it's then related to the Aleph, the three aspects of the Aleph, three aspects of the serpent, and three aspects of the Moshiach. There's all kinds of different versions of three. Defereth, yes, of Malkuth, and it goes on and on and on, head, body, tail. All kinds of different things. It's all connected to a five-dimensional matrix, if you like. So, text is Sefer. 
That's the first interpretation of the word spheroth, sephir, and this is related to world and space. It's the form of the letters, and that's re that represents Moshe, who is the head. Okay. And then sephiroth is also related to the word safar, which is number. And that's related to, and that that's related to the three dimensions of space. Uh, you, so you've got, um, you know, north, east, south, west, up and down. Okay, so far is related to the concept of year, which is time. So that's like Einstein says, time's a fourth dimension. So that's, so that's to do with the numerical value of the letters. That's connected to the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef, which is the manner. This is the stone tablets. This is the manna. This is the body. Okay, and then it's also connected to the word sipor. Sephiroth is connected to the word sipor, which is communication or telling. And this is connected to the realm called spirit, which is the fifth dimension. Okay, pure spirit. That that fills everything and surrounds everything that that we know as yod here wow here okay pure spirit pure god and this is to do with the pronunciation and name of the letters and this is related to concept of mashiach ben david and that's related to aaron's rod and that's related to the tail okay in and that that would be um uh, you know um in the vav for example that would be the upper yod that would be the vav, and then that would be the lower yod. Okay. The definition of the word sphera, a Hebrew designation of the divine emanations that form the basis of creation. So, the word for book, sefer, has the same root as the word sphera, except that the former is masculine, the latter feminine. Okay, sphera is feminine. The three books are said to be text, number and communication. The Hebrew word for test, texts, that should be, sorry. The Hebrew word for text here is sefer, which literally means book. Number is safar, from which the English word cipher is derived. Everything is, a co is, there's, everything is coded to a certain degree. Everything is coded. It's a cipher for something. So everything's got... It, hidden codes embedded within it we've got to try and uh, we've got to try and um, fathom out those hidden codes as best as we can and communication is sipo which more literally is telling okay so these are three books and i've already told you what they symbolize that's moshe and the tablets stone tablets mashiach ben yosef and the jar of manna mashiach ben david and the aaron's rod Okay, they represent quality, quantity and communication, letters, number and the manner in which they are used. They correspond to three divisions, universe, soul and year and soul. Um, Baal Shem Tov had quite a lot to say about this. In modern times, these would be called space, time and spirit. As we shall see, the Sefer Yetzirah speaks of five di dimensional continuum defined by the ten spheroth. The first three are the dimensions of space, the fourth dimension is time, and the fifth dimension is the spiritual dimension. In the next lesson I'll be talking about this because you can use this concept of um, collapsing the ways function and entropy and things like, um, you can even try and understand it when you go on to like, if you YouTube collapse of the wave um, function, there's a wonderful video that shows you how you can uh, understand all these concepts through a Sudoku puzzle. Okay, so if you imagine that you've got some kind of 5D Sudoku puzzle that you've got to somehow con collapse um, and reduce the entropy, which is like the measure of chaos, if you like, um, within a system. You've got to reduce that down by solving as many of the squares as possible in the Sudoku. But imagine it's not just 2D, it's a 5D. And you've got to, the, the truth that collapses the wave function, that 
reduces the level of entropy in the system to reveal that oneness has got to be consistent in all three five of these dimensions so basically what is written on the stone tablets of Moshe has got to align with the Torah of Mashiach ben Dawid and it's also got to be consistent with what you would call them the Torah of Mashiach ben uh, David which is the revelation that there's only Yod Heh Wahweh and nothing else beside him so that's the most elevated revelation in a way but we don't get there without the truth as revealed in um, the Torah of Moshe and the Torah of Mashiach ben Yosef that must be united together okay so the truth in order to in order to reveal the unity you've got to unite these together the, these together all five dimensions you've got to be able to unite and reveal the truth that is consistent it's consistent in all those dimensions i.e it's got to be written in the stone tablets it's got to be revealed through the um torah of mashiach ben yosef and also in the actual time period of the 6,000 years of rectification it's got to reveal aligned to what's written in the Torah of Moshe it's got to have actually occurred within time itself um, our whole experience of humanity and, and uh, what humanity has experienced in time and how that also connects to a revelation connects to the Torah of Mashiach ben Yosef and the whole concept of Mashiach ben Yosef which is um, it's, it's just a phenomenal concept you know of a suffering in exile in order to be perfected so that we are able to receive a revelation of that oneness okay and it's getting to the let and it's also got to be consistent with the um, with, with the, the the fifth dimension pure spirituality the the revelation that there's only yod here while we are nothing else beside him so in order to collapse that wave function that's that wave function that would um indicate duality we have to have truth is consistent in all five dimensions and that's like a five-dimensional Sudoku puzzle that we've got to solve just when we get one square right it's not just a line going across and a line going up and, and the little box that it's contained within it's got to be within the five literally five dimensions so when you're collapsing the entropy the uncertainty and the chaos what number is that in that particular box in a five-dimensional um a sudoku puzzle to reveal that oneness it's got to be the truth <laughs> you've got to be connected to the truth and you, so you've really you've got to get it right in order to in order to reveal unity truth is involved in that you've got to get true results um in the right or in the right order put all the jigsaw puzzles together in the right order okay and based on um like what i've said um we're in a very advanced position right now because we're right at the end of the time frame so um we can see a lot of those spaces have been filled in and we we're at a stage now where so many of those boxes have been filled in and so much of the entropy has been reduced down and so many of um uh, you know the obscurity has been collapsed for us and we've got so many jigsaw puzzles already put together that it's absolutely inevitable it's, it's like reaching that stage on the sudoku puzzle when it's just a case of um you, you, we've got beyond that stage where um how do i put it it's inevitable <laughs> <laughs> it's inevitable that we're going to collapse it and reveal that oneness we've got to the stage where it's completely totally inevitable it's like we're now riding on a wave you know and we've all the oh, we've we've gone past all the really nasty waves you know anything that could have collapsed us and we're just literally we're on our um we, we're right at the end we, we, we're right at the end just on the easy bit now all the hard work has already been done 
it's taken us a long time to get to the stage where we are now but it's all just about putting the last pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together so it sounds complicated um, when I'm putting it like this you know to, to, to reveal that hidden unity that hidden oneness but it's all been done for us in a way we're right at the end of that time process that 6,000 years so we're really at that time where every, every, all the hard work's been done it's just a case of filling in what blanks are left but we've got so much work and toil that's gone before us by the giants of Torah that, whose shoulders we stand on and all that has happened in these last 2,000 years this, um, that's happened since the crucifixion of Yeshua and we've got that, tr that, that history revealed to us so now we can we can we can align that what's called time with what's written in the Torah of Moshe and then we can um, start to see through that unity um, the whole concept of Mashiach ben Dawid revealed so basically we're right at the end we're filling in a very well filled in 5D Sudoku puzzle we just really all the hard work has been done <laughs> that's the way I look at it we just have to be clever enough to fill in them last blanks and uh, keep going with all that's gone before us and and, and draw on all that uh, all that expertise and all that um, you know all that hard work of humanity's done to bring us to this place of perfection Just we're just filling in the last few blanks we're, we're really on the home straight now and we've got we've got to be able to see that so uh, as much as as technical as what is might be presented to you on like this um uh, powerpoint and all the different complicated concepts that we need to weave together we should be thankful that we have got these to be able to weave together you know these are the works of the torah giants that have gone before us that have done all this and left us a trace of all the uh, have, have left us a trace of everything who have been diligent enough to write down all the findings from within the Torah and, and leave us with this as an inheritance yeah we've inherited some lies that we've got to deal with there's no doubt about that it presents us with a problem and I talk about that all the time but also hidden in all the exile is these great hidden truths that we just need to pull together now for the um, final revelation <laughs> it's so exciting we are living in such exciting times so let's go and have a look at this unholy serpent bear in mind that number 747 so neger are evil plague initial letters of the five types of every wrath so basically there's five types of every wrath again we're going through these three different aspects it comes up again and again okay so we've got the head the body and the tail Moshe Yeshua David, Tifereth, Yesod, Malkuth. Okay, S the six days of creation, the seventh day of creation, Shabbat, and then the eighth day, which is the world to come, the fifth dimension of pure spirit. And you've got three aspects of the the serpent. Okay, so this is the um, this is a concept of the serpent. I'm, when I'm talking about Metatron. Metatron and Leviathan I'm talking about the giant serpent okay so this is the one that bites us whilst we're in exile this is the giant serpent like the matrix is really connected to that letter Aleph that creates the um, separation between the hidden and the revealed okay Negara evil plague initial letters of the five types of Erev Rav so the five types of every rab a nephilim that's the head then there's the body this is like a serpent within a serpent i can't show you the gematria to pull that up but there is um not today anyway but when you're analyzing and um, the truth shall set you free it comes up there so the head the, the, there's five aspects of the erev rav that's represented the head, the Nephilim, the giant. Oh, sorry, they're giants, but it means the fallen ones. But then there's the three inner parts of the serpent, the Giburim, the Anachim, and the Rephaim. 
they're the part of the body but they also make up a serpent in themselves up there the head of the body and the tail that's a serpent within a serpent and then you've got the Amalekim, which is the tail. These are your Amalekites, these are your Nazis. Okay. And then you've got the three concepts of um, Metatron, Metatron and Leviathan, which is the huge serpent. These are the little serpent compared to this um, massive serpent, Metatron, Metatron and Leviathan. So there's one serpent... Um, Probably, um, don't really, I'm not going to even try and uh, cause us to understand that. But these are the forces that really fuel our egos. You know, they're, they're biting us to, with lies to fuel our egos and to puff up our egos so that we're not able to see beyond that letter Aleph. We just see ourselves in it and we see all our enemies. We think we're seeing enemies, but we're just seeing unrefined aspects of ourselves. So these are these, these, this is the serpent that bites us, but then there's a bigger serpent. And this is really the way that, that that's pure spirit is able to cross over into um into physical reality so it's like in physics it would be the link between quantum physics and classical physics they don't know this they obviously are aware that there's something that connects quantum physics to physical classical physics but they haven't found out what that is that would be symbolized by the letter vav but it's, there's a there's in, in in mystical terms, that would be a serpent, what would be called the Great Serpent. And it would appear that it's got three aspects to it, just like the letter Aleph. It's got the what's called Metatron that's represented by Moshe. It's got Metatron, which is the seventh day, the Shabbat, represented by Yeshua. And then it's got this concept of the world to come pure spirituality, which is represented by King David and um uh, leviathan leviathan has got the exact same, same grammatic as got malkuth okay and from all the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle metatron is the rod for example in yeshua in moshe's hand that turns from a rod into a serpent so there's that connection between um, metatron and the serpent is also is also the connection between duality because he represents the tree of the knowledge of good and evil okay he's also represents the ladder between heaven and earth there's all kinds of dual aspects to it but in terms of a big serpent we're talking about how yod he wow he manifests his pure spirit in physical reality how he hides within himself how he hides himself with himself is a concept that is called the big serpent. Okay? And when it comes to our true self being hidden from our self, it's a little serpent. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. That's the best way I can put it. How our true hidden self our upper self is hidden from us in this physical reality is almost like a serpent too because we should be more conscious of who we are we are made in the image of yote wow hey, that that's hidden so when we're looking in a mirror and seeing you know like i've said you, you you've got the two-way mirror but we're seeing our outer enemies we're seeing ourselves unrefined reflected out in the real world we're seeing the little serpent looking back at us we shouldn't see that we should see the name yod he wow -he because that is a tr 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 our true self we should see that awesomeness we should, should see that perfection we should see that good even in ourselves so something conceals us from ourselves and it's the serpent, there's a, there's a code name called the serpent somehow is involved with that. And it's somehow again related to the letter Aleph. And how the how the big self, the ultimate self, the ultimate existence, short hair, wow hair, hides himself from himself, is a big serpent, <laughs> a big letter Aleph. 
Aleph Gadal, you know, there is a, there is, and um, the Aleph Gadal is related to the concept of Moshiach. Okay, that's the best way that I, with all the puzzles of the, all the jigsaw puzzles that I've been able to pull together. And if you go read, look at some of my um, lessons, you'll know that I go over these concepts again and again and again. It's just getting them in the right order to understand how do these major concepts all tie up how the, you, you go to read about metatron for example just to find out about what actually metatron is is a lifetime but thankfully like i say we're standing on the we're standing on the shoulders of sages they've left a trail for us it's here there and everywhere and then somebody else has come up and refined it further and and drawn more of um the concept of this together and then somebody else has come along and drawn it together even further so now we even we have a chance to go and these major 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 concepts like metatron like the big serpent like the letter aleph like the whole uh, concept of hidden and revealed um, we can start to pull it together because um, it's already been it's already been ordered for us in a certain way so as this world is a little bit like snakes and ladders however <laughs> so it's a bit like ascent and descent this is the wave function that needs collapsing isn't it look at that is not that not a wave function ascent descent ascent descent so it's like we're riding on the back of this snake this snake is the big snake and um, and we are like uh, we've got like little snakes that we're also looking at um but then you've got this concept up here this is actually a ladder snake <laughs> so to complicate matters it's a little bit like the letter aleph it both reveals and conceals it just depends which way you're looking at it. So, is it a ladder or a snake? Okay. It's that kind of phenomena. It sometimes it appears one way but also another. It's like um, part of that, um, <laughs> like Metatron, going back to the analogy of the rod, the rod, the, the rod of Moshe that turns into the snake, that when it's a snake, Moshe runs from it okay so there's um there's a connection there the world appears like snakes and ladders so some things cause us an ascent as to ascend some things cause us to descend it's usually the truth causes ascent and falsehood descent and now we're going back to these numbers here 747 we can see how it's related to 474 for what's 474 the ah, knowledge that's the aspect of Adam that fell when he ate from the tree of knowledge. And that is what we need to rectify. Okay, and somehow this number here is involved. You can see it's connected. 474, 747. There is a connection. And, it, and, it, and it's, um, it's a little bit like this concept of the ladder snake. Because in one way... Um, the serpent is Moshiach, just as Yeshua said, just as the serpent must be lifted up, so too the Son of Man must be lifted up. Okay, so there is a connection between the Moshiach and the serpent, and like I've said, the book got the exact same Gematria, 358. It's all, it's all stuff we've got to really put together. So this is the we're looking at that, going back to that number 747 and seeing how this relates to this serpent called um, the unholy serpent, the five aspects of the error of Rav. That that bites us um, and fills us full of arrogance and pride, basically it's lies that puff us up, um, lies that come from exilic mindsets. We need Hebrew mindsets that are synonymous with the truth. So you've got the five types of Erev Rav. The initial letters spell Negara, evil plague, like coronavirus. Okay, it comes to 393, which is exactly the same as the regular and ordinary of Shiloh. Shiloh is the name of Moshiach. Okay, so these are the five types. Nephilim, Gibberim, Anakim, Rephim, Amalekim. 
um, they come to a full ordinal so if you add all the ordinals up for those five of 346 which is exactly the same as Od Yosef Chai Joseph is still alive okay so they are opposite this truth we in order to overcome this serpent we have got to be in possession of this truth and everything that that means Od Yosef Chai connected to the entire revelation of the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef. Okay, and this has got to be, um, this is what helps us de to defeat this unholy serpent. And then we've got the Mispag doll of the unholy serpent because we're dealing with um, Sophie letters. Okay, so we've got Miss Pagadol, Ordinal. So that's the full regular, that's the full Ordinal, 401, which is exactly the same as Nachash Serpent. 358, which is exactly the same as Mashiach, the, ordinal of, uh, the regular of Mashiach, but it's got an Ordinal of 43, which is exactly the same as Asaph, Body. And it's our body that dominates in exile, that causes us to be... Um, filled with fantasy fiction and imagination false concepts of the mashiach what we call the false mashiach that is none other than a serpent that bites us very hard until we've got this truth revealed we will have this there instead the serpent so if we take the 401 and the 346 that's the ordinal of Odiosif chai and this Add them together, 747. So the 747, which we've seen, is most of the man of God. That word contradiction, to deny the truth by asserting the opposite. Sometimes you've got to take the opposite and transform it into the truth. You've got to transform the lie into the truth. It's the same as Yeshua and Hanot 3, which we've already put. And it's the same as Moshe Ben Amran, 747. These are the powers all this understanding that what we showed about showed you about the aleph the, the hidden in the aleph is aluf shalolam the truth okay and how that defeats this serpent and then you've got this here um what have we got here let's have a look um Okay, so you've got the regular, the full regular of the name of the Erev Rav spelt normally, and then the Mispagadol of the Erev Rav, all five types of the Erev Rav. If you add them together, those two numbers, you come to um, 5,544, which is 2 times 2,772. Okay, you've got Yeshua filled with a Vav, when the Vav is filled like this. However, the Nun does not contain a Vav. Okay, for reasons why I've spoke of on many occasions, because he's one of the luminaries, the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef, and the Vav represents the truth, and the truth about him is very much concealed, and it's for us to toil to reveal that truth. Okay. So, but we can see how he is wholly opposite the evil Erev Rav. He is the truth, he's Yosef. Okay, and also um, this is 2 times 1386, and 1386 is Yeshua plus Mashiach ben Yosef plus Mashiach ben David. So it's a concept of Mashiach ben David plus Mashiach ben Yosef plus Yeshua. 1,396 and then we've got this here so if we add up the full regular and ordinal the full regular and ordinal up here we come to um, 6,291 which is 3 times 290, 2,097 9 times 699 that's very important because it's connected to and the truth shall set you free okay which we will see that number so bear that number in mind it's connected to and the truth shall set you free free from what free from this serpent the little serpent that bites you 
and fills you full of lies, fills you full of delusion, fills you full of a concept of the false Mashiach. Even if you believe that Yeshua is Mashiach, there'll be, be falsehood that you believe as that you've inherited from um, Edomite, Greco-Roman mindset. You won't have any break understanding of Mashiach ben Yosef. And without that, you've got lies that bite, that cause division and duality and separation and death. Okay? So we need the truth, the truth about his Hebrew roots, that he is rooted in the Torah of Moshe and only that. It's got that doubt, got to link up the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef, rooted in, fully in Torah. It can't be something that exists outside of Torah. Our understanding of Mashiach ben Yosef cannot exist separated from Torah. So we've got to collapse. The truth has got to be consistent in all five of those dimensions, in all three of those books at the same time. You know? Um, and it's connected to the concept of the treat of life because Eitz Hachayim is 233. So that's connected to that and that's connected up to this. It is ultimately when we collapse this little serpent um, and Yoshua the son of Nun, a lad, would not depart from the tent. The tent is about the Holy Shekhinah. It's related to the spirit of truth. It's related to the concept of Malkuth. It's related to that last letter here that we're we wanting to see um, completely and totally um, rectified and elevated up. Okay. Um, how is this connected then? And it's connected through those, that there, very clearly, to Yish the whole concept of Yoshua, son of Nun. Okay, and that's how you should spell Nun. Like I say, um, it, the, we've we've taken the vav out of that um, to show that, that that truth is diminished whilst we're in exile. We don't get a full revelation of the truth. Okay, I think there was something else that I wanted to say, but... Um, it's just tying it all in together there's probably other things but just bear in mind this number here 600, 699 it's connected to um, it's connected to and the truth shall set you free and what else did I want to say yeah this is the little serpent that fills us full of ego and stops us from seeing our true self within ourself it hides us from ourself because our true self is that we are made in the image of Yote Wawe, not in the image of a serpent. We, you know, these fill us with their own image, their own image of, of uh, uh, you know, ego and body and things like that and uh, lower natures. That's not our true nature. Our true nature is that we are capable of imitating the name yod -He wawe and all his attributes of mercy, being kind, being truthful, being compassionate, being long-suffering, being forgiving of sins. You know, we are supposed to imitate his name. We are not supposed to be crawling around like serpents, full of bitterness and poison. Okay, so it's all connected. We're hidden from ourselves with this serpent that keeps biting us. Right, so now we're going to have a look at this number 747 and how that's connected to David. We've seen how it's connected to Moshe. We've seen how it's connected to Yeshua. Now we need to tie it into the fifth dimension. We need to see how this, all these concepts got to relate together and be that, 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 that line of truth or that tr the truth has got to connect and be consistent through all those three books, through all those five dimensions that we're talking about. It's just, the truth has got to be com completely connected and consistent throughout all those five dimensions. So we're looking at the last dimension now. And it was after this, this is a very significant verse. And it was after this that David inquired of the Lord saying, Shall I go up into one of those cities of Yehuda? And yod -He -Wah -Wah said to him, go up. De so, said David, where shall I go up? He said, to Hebron. Okay, so where do we get this from? There's some quite interesting gematria in and amongst all this. But the Mispar Gadol is 3852, which comes to 747, uh, and an ordinal of 747. Okay, this is very significant because you've got this verb, Ale, as to ascend, and this is very much connected to 
Mashiach ben David. Uh, and as it, you've got the 15 sounds of ascent as well. Shia Hamalot, it's the same verb to ascend. Okay, it's very important. So we've got 747, but it's also 3 times 249. That number will probably come up as well. So straight away, we've got that connection between Moshe and Metatron, which Metatron represents the six days of creation. So Moses is the um, commandments that are the six, re represent the six days of work, don't they? Mashiach ben Yosef represents the Shabbat day of rest. Um, well, his, his upper self is a Shabbat day of rest. David actually manifests that seventh millennium. Okay, um, it's, I've talked about this before, I'm not going to go through that now. But Moshe and Metatron, these are the square ordinals of Moshe and Metatron. So Metatron's um, square ordinal comes to 963. I should have just put Metatron on, I've just pulled the number out. So it's actually the square ordinal of Metatron that's connected in some way to this but metatron is connected to moshe how do we know that well the sages say that the phrase metatron sa ha'alam which is one of his appellations metatron prince of the world as spells the initials of moshe okay but like i say metatron is um uh, it's, it's really difficult to, to understand all the things that i'm saying he, he's got dual his dual aspect He's got, he's, he, he can either help and be on the side of good or he can be like Satan himself. There's, there's an aspect to him that is Satan himself. Okay, so it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There's an aspect that's good and there's an aspect that's evil. Just depends if you're doing what, he's, what he tells you to do. But he's like the slave who rules. He's in, he's in charge until we grow up and stop acting like serpents. <laughs> When we start imitating the name Yote Wahweh, he's not in charge anymore. The king is in charge of us, Yote Wahweh himself. Okay, so it's until we grow up. 963 is related to that. And the entire way it was written, this is a very significant verse, but it also comes to 963. This is a really significant number as well. 144. It's related to the letter Vav. Um, Refaim. So this is one of the Erev Rav. This is the Erev Rav Mispagadol and the Erev Rav Mispagadol Ordinal of Refaim, which means the weak ones. The ones, um, I think, that the, yeah, the weak ones that run away when you get tested. Okay, so that comes to, uh, it's connected to that. He's, he, David was the opposite of weak, weren't he? He faced Goliath. <laughs> he weren't running away from nobody because he was zealous for the name of Yote Wauhe. And he was zealous. And he knew that he, he, he knew that he was, um, he's, he, whatever he was doing, it's for the sake of his name. Uh, whereas the weak ones run away at the minute that they're tested. Um, Okay, so to tie like the song of a harlot, it comes to a regular 1,323, which is three times 441. This is where Yodhe Wawe can be hid, hides himself with himself, because this whole um, verse from Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 23, 15, I've not actually written it down. It talks about the one king, and in Talmud, that one king is... Um, referred to as Mashiach, it's none other than Mashiach. So hidden in this um, particular verse, there's, there's loads and loads and loads of hidden messianic codes. One of them being more significant is the um, rev uh, it's connected to revelation of the truth because 441 is a meth. Okay, but it's also can I've covered the actual number up. Just let me just get rid of that. So there we go. We've got the regular plus the ordinal is 1,494, which is 2 times 747. So again, connected to all these. And then we've got, we've already gone through all these. I'm just showing how they are connected and connected up to David. So I just pulled up the same one. And then we go, look, and the truth shall set you free. We've got that number again, 249. And also the wings of a Jewish man. 
Okay, 498 is 2 times 249, so we can see through 249, that's also connected to that. The, this is also, the wings of a Jewish man, it's, when you analyse that verse, it's, it's showing you that Yeshua is the Mashiach. Okay. And then we've got this. So this is a filling out of Asaph. That's Asaph. That's Asaph to the first filling. And that's Asaph to the second filling. And Arizal said anything to the second filling is um, the absolute essence of a thing. Um, not one drew cent sure. Asaph. It could be, I've put Asaph to the second filling. So it might just be this here. Um, the ordinals anyway. It's the ordinal. Uh, of, of a south comes to 249 so we've got that concept of the body here that needs rectifying a south represents our ego our ego needs subduing what with with the truth it, the, the truth shall set us free from dominion uh, 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 in a of dominating over our soul or our body dominating over our mind it will set us free from that domination asav also represents roman dominion it represents the edomite exile that we're in now where rome is what who who dominates is we're in roman dominion we're in we, the whole mindset that dominates this world at the time is greco-roman western mindset it's it's the and the lies and the delusion and the arrogance and the pride and the all the negative character traits that come as a consequence of that need subduing. Okay, but they can't be subdued with more lies. They will only be subdued, this force will only be subdued with the truth. What truth? Okay, and like I say, you need to understand that to the highest degree possible. It's the truth that shall set you free. And then we've got this. This is the final redemption, isn't it? And and the dove, the Yona, returned to him at eventide. And behold, it had plucked an olive leaf in its mouth. And even that word leaf um, here, where is it there? Look, Ale Zayit. And it's exactly the same three letters for to go up because it's on the most exalted part of the tree the leaf so you've got ayin lamed he ayin lamed he ayin lamed he and then you've got ayin lamed he ayin lamed he zayit olive leaf okay so this is all connected and it's got this number again and behold it had plucked an olive leaf in its mouth so knew, Noah knew that the water had abated from upon the earth we wanting um we wanting to see that um, level of redemption that was experienced in the days of Noah now. Uh, you know, so you can see this is another key number that's connected to that. Right, so we're going to have a look at this. The truth shall set you free. First of all, we've got this verse. This is the day that you'll hear while we're made. We shall exult and rejoice thereon. Okay, some significant numbers because 989 is the regular and ordinal of the word Barashith in the beginning. And we know the end is in wedge in the beginning. It's got a ordinal gematria of 233, which is Eitz Achayim, the regular of Eitz Achayim, tree of life. Plus, if you add those two together, it's 2 times 611 and 611 is Torah. So we've got a lot connected in this um, particular verse it's all a coded message for some very significant concepts it's pro probably the three books right there <laughs> if I thought about it long enough it would probably indicate the three books the Torah of Moshe and um, the end that is wedged in the beginning that is um, you know Mashiach um, ben Dawid and then Mashiach ben Yosef representing the tree of life so anyway, back to this, the truth shall set you free. So we're looking at, the, it's this number here, the 233. Um, if we go up here, we've got the regular and the ordinal that come to 2,353, which is 13 times 181. 
that base 108 to 1 basically shows you that Yeshua is a Mashiach. It's a number I've gone on through loads. Um, it's connected to um, Psalm 72, Wilifne Yireach, Im Shemesh Wilifne Yireach, um, with the sun and before the moon. I think it's in that order. Um, and it's the initial letters spell, rearranged to spell Yeshua, and the end letters are Mashiach, it's telling you that Yeshua is the Mashiach. And there's all kinds of other connections to that number. Anyway, the Miss Pagadol is 3246 plus 249. But if we add those together, it comes to these two together, 3495, which is five times 699. We saw that the serpent was a multiple of 699. And I said, we'll point that number out again. We saw it was also connected Yeshua, uh, Yeshua, son of Nun. We saw that number connected to that. But it's also 15 times 233. So it's also connected to the concept of the tree of life. And as we can see here, we've got the 249 times 3 is the 747, which we've already pointed that out. But wanted to connect you, this statement up to all these other major um, concepts related to the co related to the tree of life, because we could see that the serpent was related to this. It's what's it's hiding it. Whereas the serpent hides the tree of life. The truth reveals the tree of life. Okay, so that collapses the wave function of duality to reveal the singularity. I think that would be the language that you use in science. You know, I'm not a science, I'm more, more based on maths, but um, from what I understand, I'm using language that is sci <laughs> scientific, uh, at least, scientific language. So Tree of Life, um, we, and science and Torah have got to be completely and totally unified. They've got to be completely and totally unified. Um, there's no scientific truth that is not rooted in Torah. If it's if it's not rooted in Torah, it's definitely not the truth. But all scientific truth has got to be rooted in Torah. Everything has got to be rooted in Torah. All truth has got to be rooted in Torah. And really, Mashiach ben Yosef is very much connected to scientific knowledge. The Vilna Gowen points this out. The seven sciences are very much connected to um, Mashiach ben Yosef. Um, Mashiach ben Yosef is very much connected to our experience in physical reality. He is suffering with us in physical reality. He's descended with us into physical reality. Okay, so he is very much connected to um, scientific revelation because that's very much connected to experience in the field of life. Um, so Tree of Life 233 is connected to that. And you've got 313, which is the regular and ordinal of Tree of Life. Okay, All these numbers are totally and absolutely super significant and wonderful. It's connected to, and Yosef made himself known to his brothers. So this concept of Mashiach ben Yosef, he was hidden from his brothers and then he revealed himself to his brothers. The truth that he was still alive was revealed. Or Yosef Chai, we saw how that was related to the little serpent, the Erev Rav, the serpent as the five aspects of the Erev Rav. Okay. And also here, look, Amuna. This is the ordinal and regular of Amuna. There's all kinds of wonderful things. Amuna means faith. The concept of the advocate of Yisrael. So well, there was a particular famous rabbi that got this designation, but it's that whole concept of Michael again, isn't it? The 101. As in with the matrix, the room 101. 101 basically is the coded message to us to advocate for the good of humanity. The hidden good. You know, these old ladies that sit knitting clothes and making clothes for kids who are poor in Africa. And, you know, little elderly old man that saves up every last penny of his pension and gives it to, uh, you know, homeless people and drug addicts. This goes on in a very hidden way, and you will never know. You you just shove them out of, of out of the way in the supermarket, and there's a lot of secret good that goes on in this world. Not everybody is taking pictures and posting it on Facebook, 
of every penny that you give away some people have been doing great good and it's hidden and you've got to have you've got to advocate for that and, and even advocate for the stuff that is revealed you've got we've got to advocate for humanity is what gets us out of um exile um it's connected up to this 699 and the truth shall set you free i've been talking about this all, all in so many so many of my teachings the power of advocacy the power to advocate for the truth okay one three nine eight two times 699 so connected to that and the concept of the tree of life um there's a there's a, a saying isn't there um you know our tongue is like a tree of life so we can see that connection there it's in proverbs um 168 is david the square ordinal of david rectified the miss pagadol of this advocate of israel is comes to 1790 and also 179 so this when you get these the regular and the ordinal being a multiple of one another it's it's highly messianic highly highly messianic i've got lists of where this comes up um, and everything to do with it, it's highly messianic so that's just another thing that i need to point out multiples where the regular is a uh, the ordinal is a multiple or a factor of the regular um so we've got that in this instance but 1790 is five times 358 five times mashiach it's also five times serpent so it depends in what you've got to be an advocate to reveal the mashiach basically it stands for michael 101 uh, it's all wonderful stuff and then we've already seen this connection haven't we Yoshua the son of Nun a lad would not depart from the tent so that's, that tent is referring to the holy Shekinah the spirit of truth the Ruach HaKodesh the holy dove it's all and the Malkuth the kingdom Miriam Yoshua is representing Yeshua it's that Yeson and hair um, or the Vav and the hair uh, we, we, it's all connected it, it's really Tifereth, Yesod and Malkuth and it's all connected um, and, and that's connected via the truth which symbolises Tifereth and these are all Kabbalistic terms but as you can see it's all connected to the tree of life and then we've got the concept of Yona again the dove coming up again and again and again and again so you've got um, the ordinal added to the regular comes to 1398 so that's the holy dove that carried the um uh, olive leaf in the mouth that we saw was connected to mashiach ben david we can see it's connected to the advocate of israel and the truth shall set you free yona the prophet yona helps to reveal and the numbers for the yona helps to reveal the truth about mashiach ben yosef shall a woman forget her suckling child from having mercy on a child of her womb 1500 also oh, it's this number here um it's the ordinal comes to 233 so as we can see it's, it's tree of life and then all these come to 233 the firstborn habachor first fruit bechora on the mountain of hashem bahar yarweh or yodhe wawhe um, I am Yodhe Wawi your Elohim, Elohim, Eloech, and the Chi. Okay, I think that's how you say it. I haven't got the verb point, um, the vowel pointing, so it's hard for me to read. And then Light of Hashem, or Yodhe Wawi. Okay, all come to 233. All very significant number, Tree of Life. The interpreter, this is the Hamelites, the interpreter that was interpreting between Yosef and his brothers before he'd revealed himself comes to 233 it's the tree of life is the interpreter and then you've got that um i talked about arizal with his commentary on Be'at Hanan, and uh, and he pleaded this is about moisha pleading not to have to descend into exile but he did have to descend into exile what does that mean he had to be hidden by the letter aleph you know the letter Aleph is connected to Moshe because in the first word of the book of Vayikra there's a little Aleph and that's connected to Moshe but it will always stay the little Aleph it will become the Aleph Gadol 
the big Aleph. We talked about that, didn't we? Uh, you know, we talked about um, Yod Heh Wow Heh hiding himself with himself. He, he hides himself in the letter Aleph, which represents himself. And the concept of the Mashiach, which is the little Aleph, is hidden in the big Aleph to a certain degree. So the co it's, it's like just as Moshe, just as Yote Wawe hides himself with himself, the Mashiach is hidden from himself with himself. And also us, to a certain degree, we hide ourselves from ourselves. You know, we hide our true self. Our, our ego self hides our true self or our physical self hides our spiritual self the same to, so to Yote Wawe, so to the concept of Mashiach so we've got to start to reveal that that's hidden and it's breath it has gathered them so this is a very very famous uh, very very messianic text from um, Isaiah seek out the book of Yote Wawe Okay, I've talked about that a lot, 233, exactly the same, it's all connected. And we were disgusted with this rotten bread. So this is the complaint against what? Against the manna. What is the manna? The manna is one of the books. That is the Mashiach ben Yosef. His testimony that represents the entire experience within physical reality, the entire time um, that we've experienced physical reality. The whole history, if you like, of physical reality within 3D space, which is represented by Moshe and the Torah. And all of it should align. We're disgusted with this bread. And another way of looking at it, you know, you, you, um, this, this, is, this will come later in the teaching. I'm going to end it here, but we've got to follow this thread through. This is part of the Lashon Hara. Moshe, Miriam was stricken with leprosy because she spoke against Moshe. There were three aspects of the Lashon Hara. There was Miriam speaking a bit about Moshe. There was the people speaking about um, the bread from heaven, like in here, and we are disgusted with this rotten bread. This was the entire congregation of Israel that spoke. We, you've got to understand the congregation of Israel is another representation of the letter A. Hey, so Miriam represented the letter He, but the entire congregation of Israel also represents the Holy Shekhinah, the letter He. Okay, so they spoke against the bread. Miriam spoke against Moshe, the head of the, um, you know, the head of the Holy Serpent. They, the people who again spoke against Miriam, that represents the final letter here, spoke that sorry, that spoke against the manna that represents the final letter here. The people represent the final letter here, spoke against Miriam. Okay, so, sorry, I'm getting this wrong now. It's uh, they spoke against the manna which represents Mashiach ben Yosef. So again, you've got the he speaking against the vav, Yeshua represented the vav. You've got um, Miriam representing the hair, speaking against Moshe, who represented the Vav. And then you've got, um, um, you've got it slightly different with Mashiach ben Dawid. You had the leaders that in some way are like the, le the leaders of the people that are somehow um, possibly related to the letter hair. What were they speaking against? They spoke against the land that represented the letter hair. The, the land represents the letter here, represents the kingdom. Aretz represents, um, the earth represents the kingdom on earth. The, the, this is all one concept, but different facets of uh, the same concept. You can see how it's, it's really is, it creates a separation between the Vav and the hair. And we've got to create unity between the Vav and the hair. That's where the healing's got to come in. There is no unity. Whilst the letter He is in a fallen, diminished, exiled state, without the inner meaning, the secret meaning of the Torah. We're going to be looking at that next lesson. So we need to know all this. So when they're complaining against this rotten bread, it's it's really creating disunity between the Vav and the He, that, that Yeshua came to repair that damage. 
he came to repair that damage to heal his own mother in a way um we got to ask has it actually been done well he's probably took that healing is probably going to take a full 2000 years and like i say we're right at the end of that now it's not happened in the way that we expected it's some kind of instant quick fix this healing that's taken place has taken a very very long time and involved a lot of people to bring like i say it's all connected to the inner meaning of the torah we'll we, we'll we'll get to it in the next lesson you really need to subscribe if you're interested in deep dip, taking a deep dive into this and seeing how all these major concepts are all codes that help unlock and help set us free <laughs> the it's literal freedom it's literal freedom from um our own ego and it's freedom from that duality and it's 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 freedom to perceive per perfection and unity and sovereignty and oneness you know that's what we need freedom we need freedom from anything that's other than that okay so we've got the soul of life here um nishmat chayim it's, it comes to a regular and ordinal together 600 900 and 69 okay i can't bring it out together and then this has got um if we add up the both ordinals the 111 which is aleph by the way aleph spelt out comes to 111 so it comes to 900 and and we've got that up there as well aleph just to point that out as well um 969 okay so we take the two ordinals the regular ordinal and miss pagdol ordinal they come to 233 all these that's the soul of life the 969 is uh, moshe 446 and that is ha'emeth the truth 446 is ha'emeth the truth and yeshua called himself the truth because he was moshe reincarnated the soul of mashiach elevated up to the level of Mashiach Ben soul of Moshe elevated up to the level of Mashiach Ben Yosef um, 969 so we're connected to that soul of life and this is at the level of Yetzirah where the Aleph is filled with a Vav and the, uh, sorry the Vav is filled with an Aleph and the He is filled with an Aleph and then that's related to this very very powerful um, messianic uh, text verse and the wise shall shine with the brightness of the sky and those who bring the multitudes to righteousness like the stars forever and ever daniel 12 3 it comes to um, a miss Pagadol of 4427 which is 19 times 233 so 19 times the tree of life but it's also here this 2187 is nine times 313 and we've got 313 is the regular and ordinal of Hetz Achaim. So we've got that double connection to the concept of the tree of life here. And also, if we add this number and this number together, it comes to 7720, which is 20 times 386, 20 times Yeshua. And it's also 10 times who Tzaharath, it is leprosy okay so there's a massive connection between leprosy and lashon hara evil tongue miriam spoke evil against moshe and she was stricken with leprosy okay so the um it's, it's like um the mashiach yeshua took that sickness upon himself and he's regarded by the sages as a leper i've spoken about this in very recent uh um, teachings we need to do a deep dive into all these concepts now so what we're going to be deep diving into next this whole concept of leprosy the whole concept of healing the holy shekhinah which is represented by miriam the mother of yeshua and um all that i've spoken about and how that's connected to leprosy and how what's the remedy for healing that and what realistically has happened to um, humanity since Yeshua stood before his mother and said, 
uh, woman, behold thy son, and to his disciple, um, behold thy mother. What has actually occurred and how can we tie the experience humanity has actually experienced with the revelation of Mashiach ben Yosef and how that is actually connected back and rooted to what is really written in the Torah. Because if we don't make that connection between the reality that Mashiach ben Yosef has presented us with and the reality that is written in the Torah of Moshe, it's not the truth. Okay, they have got to perfectly align. So we have got to, you know what I said about collapsing the wave function? And we've got to eliminate the entropy. The, the, um, got to eliminate the chaos from the system in order to reveal the singularity, the unity of the name yod heh wow -Hey. We need truth. Okay, so we need to truly interpret reality in accordance with what's written in the Torah, a true interpretation of the Torah as the tree of life, not the tree of knowledge of good and evil, looking through the lens of the name yod heh wow -Hey, not looking through the lens of our ego and just seeing our enemies um, staring back at us and the serpent continuing to bite us. So with that, I will say shalom. Please subscribe and remember that we've got some great lessons coming up.